We here at the Movie Ticket Radio Podcast salute all the YouTubers who do all their videos because, you know, I found out this is a lot of work. Hi, I'm J.R. Russ, and we're posting our podcasts here now just for more people to find and hear them. But, you know, John Landecker and I are pretty much radio guys. In fact, folks have said that we have faces for radio. That means no pictures, no video, no graphics, just this. So sit back and enjoy the oral experience, spelled A-U-R-A-L. That means sound, not what you're probably thinking. Movie Ticket Radio. Welcome to the Movie Ticket Radio podcast, the companion to the streaming audio movie hits format, movieticketradio.com. I'm your charming and delightful host, J.R. Russ, and with me, Hall of Fame broadcaster, John Records Landecker. And John, what are we going to be talking about today? What we're going to be doing, and I'll say this, and I won't be yelling it, but we are going to be doing Good Morning Vietnam. (laughs) You're not doing it like Robin Williams did? Good Morning Vietnam! (laughs) No? No, I, I guess not. Based at a real person, too. Adrian Cronauer, I believe, is the... Yeah. Pers- yeah. He was a top 40-ish jock trying to rock and roll Vietnam when the radio stations, uh, the Armed Forces Radio at that time, was very kind of stodgy, what would be called oh, yeah. middle of the road. Very, yep. you know, Lawrence Welk kind of music stuff. Rockin' the DMZ. That's what he was. And there is yeah. a ton of music in this movie. Including Lawrence Welk. Including Lawrence Welk. Yeah, well, <laughs> I thought he deserved a shout out, and he did. So Lawrence Welk starts things out with Around the World. That's a wonderful, a wonderful. Like you are your, my melody makers. If I turn on the bubble machine. Uh. Your parents or grandparents <laughs> probably still watch that on PBS someplace. It's yeah. still around, yeah. and they're producing it, and now the children and the children's childrens are actually producing them. And you know, one of the most uh, viewed YouTube videos is a section of the Noah Lord's Welk Show where they go into the song One Toke Over the Line <laughs> without understanding anything about what the song is really about. Oh, man, I did, I'll have to look for that. Oh, you haven't seen that? No. Oh, it, it, it's hysterical. Here's a couple of the kids with one of the new gospel songs or something like that. Oh, I don't. <laughs> oh, in fact, I had to look for it. So here it is. One talk over the line, sweet Jesus. One talk over the line. Sitting downtown in a railway station. One talk over the line. Don't you know that we're a sitting downtown in a railway station? One talk. One talk over the line. Spiritual by Gail and Dale. The modern the spiritual. <laughs> well, they, they're, in fact, there's a lot of Lawrence Welk music in this. Going down the list here, the Kit Kat Polka, which Lawrence wrote, he and Myron Florin, who was the accordion player, were on yeah. that one. And then they also did I'll Never Smile Again. That's a traditional one from Ruth Lowe. And Hot Time in the Old Town Tonight. And they had this mm-hmm. woman that played the honky tonk piano named Joanne Castle, and she apparently wrote that song, but she didn't perform it. That's what's so weird. Lawrence and Myron Florin performed it, but Joanne Castle wrote that song, and she was always in that show playing that honky tonk, dinky dinky dinky. Uh, what do they call that? Like an upright piano, like you'd see in a lot of schools and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they call it a honky tonk. Maybe they just call it an upright. I don't know what they. Yeah. Just a regular. Piano. Right. Yeah. Well, you would see them in a honky tonk, if you would. Yes. Well, yes. You use that old, old timey phrase. <laughs> right. And uh, so then a lot of other songs just to show how different it was. So the original or standard Armed Forces Network is playing Lawrence Welk. And then Adrian Cronauer comes in and he's playing Baby Please Don't Go by Them, <laughs> song written by Big Joe Williams. Which, of course, them being Van Morrison. Yeah. And then yeah. there's a Bob Dylan song, The Ballad of a Thin Man, done by the Grassroots. Amazing. And wait, one of my all-time favorites, Beach Blanket Bingo with Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello. Bingo! American International Pictures presents at oh, the drive-in. Man. Oh, yes. <laughs> Guy Hemrick and Jerry Steiner wrote that. And... Mm. uh 
there was a woman that had a hit with it. Donna Lauren had the hit, I think. But I'm sure this was in one of the Disney movies. Yeah, it's Frankie Avalon and Funicello, Beach Blanket Bingo. But I don't think, was that a Disney movie? I don't think so. Eh, maybe not, but they were the... I don't think Disney in the 60s would allow its net to be out in a two-piece bathing suit. Oh, yeah, can't show that midriff. Uh-uh. No, no. But they were the hot couple, if you will, for teens. Oh, boy. They yeah. sure were. Every guy wanted to date Annette, and every girl wanted mm-hmm. Frankie Avalon. So it was like, not yeah. only were they a cool couple together, but everybody wanted them separately. Yeah. That's and right. then a great song by the Rivieras. Great guitar and drumming in it. California Sun. Going out west where I belong. Yeah. California Sun. Henry Glover and Morris Levy the writers there, and, and kind of a mellow thing with piano and that, going back to their mellower side. The Sounds Orchestra, Cast Your Fate to the Wind. Great tune. Yeah. That was a big hit, too. I liked it a lot. And Vince Guaraldi was one of the writers with Eberhard Weber, and didn't Vince Guaraldi do the music in the Peanuts? He sure song? did. Yeah. Yeah. Then a Marvelette song. Danger, Heartbreak, Dead Ahead. Not one of their big tunes, but I do remember it Yeah, uh, on Motown. Well, that's what's neat about some of these movies. You discover some of the secondary titles by these artists. Yeah, yeah. William Stevenson, Clarence Paul, and Ivory Joe Hunter. Joe Hunter. Oh, that's yeah. a cool, cool name. And it is. Big hit by the Beach Boys. Don't worry, baby. Brian Wilson, Roger Christian, writers there. And switching back to being mellow. Dream on a little dreamer. Performed by Perry Como in his... Cardigan sweater. Yeah. <laughs> Written by Ian Crutchfield and Fred Birch. My wife's father said his neighbor had a picture, and I'll set it up first by saying Perry Como was a barber by trade before hitting it big, and my father-in-law's neighbor in Philadelphia had a picture of Perry Como sitting in a barber chair and Frank Sinatra cutting his hair. Did Perry Como as a barber invent the comb over oh maybe <laughs> that's bad you can uh, edit we, that out yeah that's can bad. i put them I, I gotta find some studio groans <laughs> and a theme that was a pretty big hit but was oh, yeah. also the theme show for a tv show five o'clock world by the vogues it's a five o'clock world when the whistle blows do you remember the show that used that as no. a theme? I do not. The Drew Carey Show. Oh, yes, indeed. They used it for yeah, the first yeah, yeah. couple of seasons, and then they right. switched to Cleveland Rocks. Rocks, yeah. yeah. Ian Hunter. Alan Reynolds, the writer on that one, and then big voice here, Wayne Fontana and the Mind Benders. With a line in it that um, probably wouldn't go over as well today, the purpose of a man is to, wait a minute, the purpose of a woman is to love a man, the purpose of a man is to love a woman, something along those lines. Yeah. And that, of course, those purposes have been rearranged. Or dissolved. <laughs> exactly. There is no purpose now. You get. Yeah. Another Beach Boy song in there. Round, round, get around, I get around. The DMZ. Yeah. <laughs> Written by Ryan Wilson and Mike Love. Into Cambodia. Yeah. And then, I got you. I feel good. James Brown. Mazio, take it to the bridge. And by the way, just announced, Primary Wave Music said it's agreed to a reported $90 million deal to purchase the estate of James Brown. How much? 90 mil. Wow. The company will control his publishing, music, master recordings, as well as real estate, his name, and likeness rights. Wow. So... You know, not a $400 million Bruce Springsteen deal, but... But still. Big money for being dead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it certainly is. I wish is. I could make a fraction of that being alive. No doubt. I saw him in the 80s in Washington, D.C. at the Capitol Center, and it Ooh. was when people were trying to make amends to the Vietnam veterans, and they uh-huh. had a Welcome Home Veterans concert, and it was one of these geezers of rock where... Stars would come on and just do one or two songs or three songs, and then they go off, and then another one would come on. Right. And right. I remember Tina Turner was there, and James Brown was there, and I don't know if he was the hardest working man in show business, but he was the sweatiest man in show business. Man, <laughs> he was soaking wet. And it was kind of funny because it was like almost, other than living in America, and that song got you know rave reviews, the audience went wild because that was the big hit in 
like 1986, I think it was. But the other songs were almost interchangeable. It was like, I got you. I feel good. Hot pants. My baby. They were like all the same song with just different words. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. But, and there's a lot of truth to that. But it was like a basketball game where they come out and mop up the court after somebody <laughs> runs by and sweats all over the place. Man, he was a sweaty guy, but good. Good entertainer. Oh, yeah. Put all, absolutely. Put his all in it. And worth you know every it. penny of that 90 mil to somebody. Absolutely. Sure. Another one by the Wicked Picket, Wilson Picket. Wait until the midnight hour? Yeah. Yes, sir. He and Steve Cropper wrote that. Great song. Mm-hmm. And one that I'm not sure if this is the, the one I'm thinking of, It's All Right. It is. But, it is. Well, if you think it's all right. Yeah. It's okay. all right. It starts out like slow and then kicks in. Mm-hmm. Adam Faith. I'm not even familiar with that name, but I know the song. Yeah. I, I am familiar with that name and that song. It happens okay. to be one of my favorites from that area. But if you think it's all right, it's all right. Chris Andrew it's Ryder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I love the falsetto voice by the <laughs> castaways and fly, fly, pants on fire. Your nose as long as a telephone wire. <laughs> that song dedicated to Jim Harbaugh of Michigan, who caught his pants on fire recently at a football game. He did? Standing too close to the heater. Yeah. I think it was Ohio State. I didn't see that. Well, he probably didn't notice because they were winning. He, he didn't. And some, one of the side coaches, instead of like, coach, coach, you're on fire. He was remarking. The guy just said, hey, uh, your pants are on fire. <laughs> and they were. <laughs> one of my favorite instrumental groups and the man for whom I decided not to play the trumpet, Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Acapulco. And I guess his brother, Dave, I think that's who wrote it. It's Dave Alpert. must be his brother or a relation. Mm -hmm. I took band, and I wanted to play the trumpet, and I tried to play it, and it sounded, as you would expect, the beginning trumpeter to play. And I went, if I can't pick this up and play like Herb Alpert, I'm not interested because it's so hard, I'll never be as good as Herb Alpert. Well, that's a pretty high bar. Yep, and it was a pretty... Weak attitude to have, not to persevere, but I was just like, nah, I'm just, not, I'm not that committed to doing this. So I'm never going to do you. it. But I loved Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Loved all their stuff. Uh, Jack Jones, Lollipops and Roses. In fact, Herb Alpert oh, wow. did a version of that song, an instrumental. Apparently, Colt loves Jack Jones. He does. <laughs> or Lollipops and Roses, one or the other. <laughs> Maybe somebody's delivering those. It could be. <laughs> and the instrumental version of that was done by Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. And that song was one of the background songs in, was it Love Connection? Oh, the I don't dating, know. The dating game. Oh, the dating game. Ba -da -ba -dum, ba -da -ba -da. Right. Well, that was the Spanish flea. And then when they would bring oh, right. out a girl and they would talk about what she did, that was like, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. And they was, you know, she's a senior from Northwestern High School or, you know, a junior in college. I don't, or, I don't think they did. I don't think they did teenagers on the dating game. Yeah, well, you're right. <laughs> Not unless you wanted to go to prison. It was a different era then, you know. It, it <laughs> you're, certainly was. She's only 16, as the song said. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but anyway, they would uh, play. There were several Herb Alpert songs that were used in those. They used... Um, Brasilia as the theme oh, yeah. for this song called The Joker's Wild. Jack Nars was the host. Oh, the so the TV show The Joker's Wild. Yeah, yeah. and Brasilia, right. that show's been brought back. It's being run, I, th I think it was maybe Alec Baldwin. Game Show was Network? It. No, it was ABC or NBC or somebody oh, really? running game shows, yeah. And that was brought hmm. back recently with, I forget who, it might have been Alec Baldwin, but I'm not sure. He's not doing much of anything right now. But no. Then a great Martha and the Vandellas song, Nowhere to Run. Yeah. And I think Nowhere, Nowhere to, to Hide. hide. Yeah. yeah. Great intro, too. Holland Dozier, Holland, writers there. Uh, very yep. uh, prolific songwriting trio, I guess you would say. From Motown. Yeah. yeah. Then this was a very mellow song that was not done by the hit artist, Smoke It's In Your Eyes. That was done by who? The Platters. Yeah. And this was the Ray Conniff sanitized middle-of-the-road version. 
even smoke within your eyes was not a rocker. It was a very smoke, a very slow song. Yeah, but again, they were doing the old, more mellow. In fact, that's what would happen. They'd show the the shift change, or the the DJs changing over, and the guy either before or after Adrian Cronauer would be playing this really mellow type music. Oh yeah, right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. And right. then he'd come in and start blowing the doors off of the place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jerome Kern, an Otto Harbach writer there. And then uh, a nice one from The Searchers, Sugar and Spice, All Things Nice. Uh, written by Tony Hatch. I don't uh, think he Fred was proud. Nightingale. Yeah, I don't think he was proud of that. He changed his name totally. Well, you know, Sugar and Spice was also done by a Chicago band called The Crying Shame. Yeah, that's the version I know. So I don't yeah. know this as the searchers. So either the oh, searchers. I, it's not, they sound exactly the same. No. Oh, okay. They sound exactly the same. So either the searchers offed it from the crying shames or vice versa. I think probably vice versa. Yeah. And, but WLS was the big station in Chicago of where you worked at one time. And, of course, WCFL was another biggie there. And mm -hmm. uh, they broke those records, if you will, because they had these towers sitting in the middle of America that just spewed out rock and roll in all directions. Ah, those were the days. Yeah. Now, by the way, if you want to hear kind of what those stations sound like, we have another little place for you to listen to music back in the day. It's called WCFLChicago.com. And it has all those songs and some of the DJs in it. It's running 24-7, resembling what that radio station sounded like back in the day. So, you know, you can check you that bet. out if you're looking for something different to do. That was a great station, too. Yeah, really was. They were both great. That was, that was my favorite station. Yeah. Uh, not before I got to, before I got to WLS. Obviously, when I got there, that was my favorite station. But before getting into major markets and things like that, I mean, CFL. I thought they were awesome. Yeah, they did a lot of more unorthodox things. They with wacky totally. contests and uh, they Chicken had a, Man. Yeah, take off on the Batman TV series. Yeah. Pretty funny stuff, and just, it was just good. creative, very creative, very creative. Whereas uh, WLS was more; it was owned by ABC Network. It was a little more buttoned down, you know, more corporate run. I think totally, think. totally, absolutely. WCFL was owned by a labor union. They called it the Voice of Labor, and that's what Chicago it meant. Federation of Labor. That's what the call letters meant, and I don't think yeah. that the lawyers at the union understood it so they just let them do whatever they wanted to do and i think that's how that station got to be the way it was because it's like we don't know anything about radio just you know don't <laughs> lose the license or go bankrupt and we'll we'll keep supporting you right then we got another beach boy tune written by brian wilson and mike love warmth of the sun yeah i think your meatloaf is done <laughs> i hear some beeping <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the only show with a microwave. <laughs> or your coffee's warm, one or the other. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm going to save this next song till the end, and I'll tell you why when we get to the end. Okay. But there was Yeah, Yeah. Georgie Fame. And the Blue Flames. Yeah, now that's, that's not to be confused with Yeah, Yeah. You know, like looking, uh, Anna doing something, uh, Mama, uh, looking for my Yeah, Yeah. Oh, yeah, Yeah, huh? Different song. But, yeah, totally. Uh, this is Yeah, Yeah. Not ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Pat Patrick Rogers Grant and John Hendricks knew that and said it's ya yeah, ya. Yeah. We're not abbreviating it to ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Right. Then there were a couple of songs that appeared but didn't get performance credit. So I'm not. I had to rewatch the movie for my boyfriend's back. Puff the Magic Dragon and Rawhide. Oh my. Theme. And uh, you keep me hanging on as well. So those songs wow. appear in the IMDb breakdown but they don't say who it was performed by. So I'm not sure if people were humming it or they were the original hits or studio groups or just some kind of soundtrack thing, but not there. Should go back and take another look. That was a great movie, and it's one that's gotten forgotten about. It suddenly occurred to me, the actor named Bruno Kirby played the straight-laced Armed Forces radio guy who could not understand... Uh, the character being done by Robin Williams and attempted to come out and do his own quote unquote wacky show. Yeah. And it is hysterical. <laughs> Cause it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. Uh, it's so bad. And it's just something that a lot of these movies that are, what, what did we say? This came out 1987. So that many decades ago, 
they get lost and a lot of people won't watch something before they were born and and now is the right. easiest way to do it because it's probably on one of the platforms or more that you're paying oh, for and it's easily definitely worth a watch if for nothing else but the music but robin williams performance is stellar it's a little bittersweet and that brings me to our last song when what a wonderful world comes on it's the louis armstrong one written by david weiss yeah. and bob thiel and while this beautiful song is playing, they're showing the napalming of the country. Yeah. And yeah. so it is a bittersweet movie, but there are just some hilarious moments in it, too. It's a great film yeah. and a great soundtrack. It's yeah. going to run your emotions a couple of ways, but it's really worth it. So. You're absolutely right. So if you get an opportunity, check it out. Good morning, Vietnam, Robin Williams and others. And that takes care of it this time around. And John, what do you think? we should do next time have you given it any thought i have what? and it's one of the coolest movies with one of the coolest actors charlie's theron in cool. atomic blonde oh man yeah pretty good yeah. movie uh, it, oh i loved it action movie Big, just yes oh totally stuff. she's a uh she's a mi6 agent yeah uh very good one very good movie I love her. It's funny because oh, yeah. she's so beautiful. She often does these roles where she really has to dress down and ugly right. herself up because you otherwise people, I think she thinks, oh, people say, oh, you just got that because you're so good looking. And she just is oh, stunning. Oh, no. But she, she's a she great knows actress. what she's doing. Yeah. No doubt. Uh, very funny, too. The comedy roles she does are great. If you yep. ever saw A Million Di Ways to Die in the West, uh, that's sure also did. a really good one. So, yep. uh, yeah, let's get that. And, and Mad time. Max. Did you yeah. see her in Mad Max? Oh, yeah. That was unbelievable. Yeah. So we'll do that next time. Right. So like us and recommend us and forward us and email us and tweet us and Instagram us and Facebook us. And yep, is there and anything I left out? No, I think you got it. I got to still YouTube <laughs> us, though. And oh, YouTube. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I haven't done it yet. I got to put that channel up because that's what the I think the subscribe means. You got to do that. So I. I yeah, we do to, need to do that. I have yeah. To dedicate the time. Right. And I'm not sure if I can post this before the new year, but it's coming anyway. So happy new year to you. And to you, too. Happy night. Uh, I almost said 1922. <laughs> happy 2022. <laughs> and. Uh, what are we going to do about prohibition? <laughs> I think we should repeal it. That's what. Drinks for everybody. Get out your Tommy guns, everyone. <laughs> and stay away from Chicago on Valentine's Day. You know, you might want to stay away from Chicago even right now. Yeah, I'm telling you. I know. Some of the bigger cities are getting rough. So be yeah. careful. Stay safe. Email us at movieticketradio at gmail.com. Any comments, questions, observations, grapes, we'll take them all. We want to hear from you. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'm J.R. Russ. I'm John Landecker. Goodbye. See you next time. Movie Ticket Radio.